Hello, this is Dr. Jeremiah Tempoy of Sol Optometry, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to use the Topcon CV5000 autofluoropter. This here is the control panel for the autofluoropter. On the top of the screen, you'll see the data for the sphere, cylinder, and axis. The left side of the screen actually shows the numbers for the patient's right eye, and the right side of the screen shows the data for the patient's left eye. So like everything else in optometry, it's through the patient's perspective. The lower right side shows the letters that we are testing. So as you can see, the 2040 line here is highlighted, so that's what's being shown to the patient. And on the lower left side of the screen, you can see some various different charts that you can pick. On the bottom of this control unit, the most important thing is this dial right here. That dial is used to toggle between numbers going up, plus in power, minus in power, changing the sill, changing the axis. And then on the lower right, you can change the letter size uh, with these arrows here going up and down. So to start a refraction, what I would do is input the autorefractive data and lensometry data that was taken during pretesting. And the way that's done is with this button right here, the blue one that says in. You'll see on the screen several uh, data points pop up. On the left side, it's the autorefractive data, and in the middle, it's the lensometry data, or RX data. So to choose which one, I would go to the corresponding printout. So this is the autorefraction that we did, number 1868, and that corresponds to 68 here on the AR data, and I'll just tap that. And for lensometry, that corresponds to 1044 that we took, and which is 44 here on the screen. So it only inputs the last two digits. So the initial data set here on the far right, that is what the computer will input as your uh, initial data set that you can change um, and start the refraction with. So you can start with the AR data, or you can start with the RX data, you can choose. I always like to start with the AR data, so I'm gonna tap that and press OK. And you'll hear some noise in the background. That's actually the Ferropter inputting the data and also the PD. So once you're ready to begin, you wanna hit the Set button. Now, this Ferropter has steps that are pre-programmed. These steps can be changed to your liking, but I'm just going to go over what is in uh, what is programmed into this machine right now. So the first thing that you want to do is hit the set button. By hitting the set button, you'll see that the axis portion for the right eye is highlighted. And you will also notice that on the right side of the screen, all those numbers are grayed out, which tells us that the left eye is covered. Now, since there's only a quarter diopter of cylinder for the right eye, what we wanna do first is screen all the major axes for cylinder. So what I'm gonna do is press the C button here, and you'll see that the minus quarter sill on the right eye is highlighted, and we can change those numbers now. So first we're gonna screen the 176 degree axis. An important thing to look at is that circle where half of it has a red ring around it, half ring around it, and the other half has a green half ring around it. So that's what the patient sees. When they're looking out of the varopter, they're actually seeing a split image of the screen. And on their upper left side, it'll have a red ring around it. And on their lower right side, it'll have a green ring around it. What you want to ask them is which screen or which letters are more clear, the ones on the upper left or the ones on the lower right. So while we're screening for the axis here on the hundreds, or screening for the cylinder on the 176 degree axis, let's say that the patient says that the green side is clearer, which is a rejection of the axis. I'm gonna go over here to the right side and um, press on the next major axis, which is 45. You can see that what the patient sees the screens have rotated. So now they have a screen on the top, which has red around it, 
and one on the bottom which has green around it. Let's say that the patient rejects the cylinder at the 45 degree axis as well. So we'll try the next major axis, which is 90. And the letters have rotated. We have one on the upper right, one on the lower left with green. And let's say the patient says green again, another rejection. And at 135, they see one to the right with red, one to the left with green. And let's say that they say green again, another rejection. So on all axes, the patient does not want any cylinder. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the cylinder out and we can do that one of two ways. We go over here and we can rotate the dial counterclockwise or press the green button. So if I rotate this dial counterclockwise, you can see the cylinder goes to zero. Or if I press the plus button, same thing. So the next step is to go towards the sphere. We know that the patient does not want any cylinder. Now the, the instrument is pre-programmed to test for cylinder. So if I press the set button, it won't do anything. It's actually moving up to the cylinder portion, which we already put it on. So I'm going to go ahead and press it again, and it's going to go to the sphere. Now that we're on the sphere portion, we can refine the prescription from here. You can fog the patient if you want by adding plus and then going back down to see where they can see the line that is presented to them. And I should note that once I pre press the set button, the auto ferropter or the control panel did change the letter size. So when we were screening for a cylinder, it was showing the 2040 line. And once we went to the sphere portion of the refraction, the line became the 2025 line. And you can see that the 2025 line is highlighted here and it's showing up here on the screen. So say at this refraction, at these numbers at this sphere, the patient sees 2020. So I will go down to this and I will hit 20. That'll populate the 20 on the right eye, which stands for 2020. And we're going to go on to the next eye by pressing the set button. And that's going to the next step in this programmed refraction. So in this step, you can see that the right eye is covered by the graying out of all those numbers. The left eye is now open. The cylinder, the sphere portion, I should say, is highlighted. So let's go to the next step, which is which is axis refinement. So with the left eye, we see that the cylinder is minus 0 0.75. So we don't have to screen for cylinder at this axis. We, we can actually refine at this point. And in order to do that, we ask the patient again, looking straight ahead, they'll see a split screen, one screen to the right, one on the left, the right being green, the left being red, which side has letters that are clear. And let's say that they tell me that the left side, the red side is clearer. So the letters on the left side are clearer. I'm going to move this dial towards the red. And I like to do it, I'll do it three times. So with a, a cylinder of, of minus 0 0.75, um, my first movement is about 15 degrees and each turn of the dial is five degrees so i turn it three times for a 15 degree change you can also press the red minus button too and you would press it three times as well the increments of the axis can be changed from five degrees to one degree which is useful if you have higher amounts of cylinder and you want to refine a little bit more closely. That can be done by tapping this little area here. It says step A or step axis and right now it's at five degrees. You can set it to one degree by tapping it and you can see here that when I move the dial it'll change by one degree instead of five. I'm going to put it back to five degrees. 
So let's continue with the refraction. The patient says that the right side is now clearer the green side. So instead of moving 15 degrees, I'm actually going to refine it a little more and move 10 degrees, which equals two steps in the green direction. So I'm going to take the dial and turn it counterclockwise twice. And then I want to refine it a little more and I'll ask the patient, okay, which side is more clear, the red side or the green side? And let's say they say the red side this time. So I'll refine it just a little bit more. And instead of going two steps, I'll go one step in the direction of the red side. And I'll turn the dial once. So axis refinement has been completed. We're going to go to the next step by pressing the set button. And you can see that it changes to the cylinder. Now, one thing I'm going to note, because I didn't show this to you last time, is that the 2040 line is highlighted here. So that is what the patient is viewing. On the screen, you can see that it's 2040. Let's say that the patient can't see 2040. Uh, you can always increase the letter size when testing cylinder and axis. I'm going to go back down to 2040. Another thing that I want to mention is you can also do the traditional Jackson Chris cross cylinder method if you want. There is a little button down here that says Jackson CC. And if I press that, you'll notice that it changes to uh, a couple of red dots vertically and then the white dots horizontally. And at this point, you can ask the question which uh, lens is clearer, one or two, you can use these here, one and two. So green would be one and red would be two. So if I ask the patient, which is clearer, this is lens one or lens two, and they say lens two, then I would add minus. And if I ask them here, which is clearer, lens one or lens two, and they say lens one, then I would remove minus, add plus. I'm going to go back to the TopCon CC, which is that split screen that is shown to the patient. And again, screen for the cylinder at the 180 degree axis. So I would ask them which side is clearer, the upper left side, which is red, or are the letters on the lower right side, the green side clear? Let's say that they tell me it is the green side. So I'm gonna turn the dial towards the green side once. Okay. And at this point, just for the sake of time, I ask them which side is clearer, upper left or the lower right, and they say it's about the same. I will stay right there and move on to the next step by hitting set. The next step is the sphere. You can see once we move to the sphere, the VA, the letters become the 2025 line. So they become smaller automatically. And I'll show you up here. Now it's the 2025 line instead of the 2040 line. And you can do what you wish. You can fog if you want. You can refine until they see the 2025 line. And then I go down by pressing the button right here. And you can see it became the 2020 line. And I can ask them to, if they can see the 2020 line. Refine as needed as well. And let's see, they can see 2020 with minus 75. And so I'm going to put in 20 right here to denote their VA was 2020. So the next step by pressing set is to test binocular vision. So I would test their VA with both eyes together. And you can see that the 2020 line is still the line that is presented to them. I can move down if I want and try to test 2015. And let's say that they can see 2015 with both eyes together, which is awesome. So I'll press that 15 and binocularly they say they have 2015 vision. I'm going to hit set again. And what happens now is we're testing the near eye or we're testing up close for near. You will see the portion where it says add is highlighted. So that means we could add, add power or not. If I go over to the autoferopter, you'll see that these lights are turned on. 
those lights illuminate the reading card, which I do not have on there right now. So you would put the reading card on there and test their VAs. And I'm just going to say that they have a plus one add and their VA was 2020. And I'll denote it like that. Some things that you can do that I should mention is toggle between the right and left eye. And that's with the buttons here, the blue buttons on the top. If you press R, you'll test just the right eye and you'll see the, the left eye gray out. You can do the left eye only, the right eye will gray out, or you can do both. So the next step by pressing set is, it says, do you want to quit the course? So we're at the end of the refraction and I'm gonna press S and I'm gonna press the F slash N button so that the ferropter goes back to its original state and the light, the near light turns off. F slash N stands for far slash near, depending on what you're testing. And that's pretty much it. That completes the refraction. In my office, I have Revolution EHR as my electronic health record program. And for those working in my office, I do want to go over how I input the prescription information that was obtained from the TopCon CB5000 into Revolution. So let me go ahead and turn this computer on again. Okay, so let me log in real quick. Okay, so I have a patient populated into Revolution already. And the first thing that I wanna do is you do have to be in their chart note. If you're not in their chart note, it's not gonna transfer. Uh, so right now I'm on a test patient. Down here is this little icon. I would click on it. This is the Revolution uh, EHR integrator or the Rev integrator. And I'm just gonna log in. This program is what allows the data to be transferred from the TopCon instruments into Revolution. And let's see here. Let me go ahead and set this patient up for today so that they're... Their data comes out. Here we go. So now you can see that the test patient is in Rev Integrator now. I'm gonna highlight, capture data. Okay, now that the data is capturing, in order to complete it, I'll go back to the control panel and hit the print button right there, the green print button. You can see this window pop up. This is basically all the information that was taken by all my TopCon instruments. So the autoferopter, um, the refraction from there will pop up. The um, lensometry data is going to pop up. The keratometry data is going to pop up. So I'm going to go to hit this button, send to Revolution EHR, hit OK. And if I go to the chart, and I'm going to, go to I'm going to go to the comp visual testing. You'll see that the auto refraction data has been populated, keratometry, lensometry. I'm going to go ahead and hit next to the final refraction data. You can see that the final refraction is there as well. So this data has been transferred over here. One of the kind of quirks about the system is that. When you have a spherical refraction, for some reason, revolution will put 180 degrees. So you can see on the red eye, 
it was a minus 50 sphere was the final refraction, but there's a 180 degree axis on there and that shouldn't be there. So I would just make sure you check on that whenever you have a spherical prescription so that you can delete that because you don't want that showing up on the final prescription that's given to the patient because the optician is going to be confused and think that there's supposed to be cylinder there since an axis was identified when there really isn't. Another quirk that it does is sometimes it doesn't show the axis that it needs to be on, mainly the 180 degree axis. And you can see that on the left eye where the left eye says minus 75, minus 50, and then it's blank. Um, that was supposed to be 180, but for some reason, sometimes it doesn't show up. So I would have to add it. So just some little quirks and glitches on the system that I watch out for um, and for you to be aware of. So with the final refraction, we go into the optical screen. And um, if you want to create a new prescription for this patient, you would go down to create RX. And then what I would do is first thing I do is pick what this prescription is for. And I'm going to put distance and near. And then if you hit this tiny little button on the upper right hand side here, you'll see the data that was taken for today, the final refraction for today, and then the auto refraction and the lensometry. And I'm gonna put the final refraction is what I want to prescribe for the patient. So I'm gonna highlight it, hit select. And then I'm gonna to go to this slide bar right here for recommendations. And you can make the recommendations you wish um, polycarbonate, AR, photochromic, UV, polarized, progressive, multifocal on the lens type. If you know the type of AR that you want or the lens type that you want, then you can type it in in those fields as well. Say you want Crizal or Unity, Shamir or whatnot. If you want to be specific, you can type it in those fields. And then when you're all done and you're ready to authorize this prescription, you go down to the very lower right and hit update and authorize. Once it's updated and authorized, the prescription can be printed out, um, it can be ordered, and the staff can see it on their end. So that is a brief rundown on how to use the TopCon CV5000 Autoferopter, along with uh, integrating it with Revolution EHR. Hopefully that was useful and helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Have a good day.